Justin from Getaway RV, and I uh, just wanted to quickly go over a few of the operational items on your Lance trailer. So, in here, we have your propane tanks. Uh, there's three propane tanks. Two of them are connected, so the two rear ones are connected. And if you notice on top of the regulator, there is an arrow. So what I can do is I can open both of these tanks up. And whichever way I point the arrow, it'll run on that tank first. So point it this way, for example, it'll run on this tank first. Once this tank is empty, it will automatically switch over to the opposing tank. When it switches over, this little green window here will be red. So if you have your arrow pointing in one direction and you see this is red, you know it's changed onto the opposing tank. The other way of operating it is simply opening one tank at a time. When you run out of propane, you can come turn the other one on. This is just your battery compartment in here. Really uh, nothing for you to, uh, to do in here. Storage compartments. And in here we've got your main power cable. So that power cable hooks up here. Just open up the lid. You've got prongs on here. You just want to line them up with each other. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. Push it in, give it a little twist, and you can tighten up the collar on it. And then plug the other end into the campground. Coming off is just the opposite. Just loosen that off, give it a light twist, and pull it out. And back into the storage compartment. Underneath the trailer, in front of the wheels, we've got your sewer hookup. Uh, there's a sewer hose uh, stored in, in one of the compartments. Just take the cap off, and you can actually pull that handle. So that's your black water, which is going to be your toilet waste. Behind the wheels, you've actually got liquid waste, which is going to be your gray water, uh, from uh, like your, your kitchen sink, for example. All right, if we move over to your tires, uh, tire pressure should be kept to the maximum pressure on the tire, which in this case is 65 PSI cold. Uh, cold pressure means that you uh, check the tire inflation uh, when the tires are cold, so you haven't been driving down the road for a long time, you do it at the start of your journey. Uh, you should check your wheel nuts uh, before each trip as well. There's the little warning sticker on here. Uh, the trailer does not come with a wheel wrench. So go to your local tool shop and uh, buy yourself a torque wrench. Typically, they're going to be torqued between 100 to 110 foot-pounds. Actually, Lance does send a tire wheel wrench with it. Okay. Yeah. This is just exhaust for your uh, Truma heating system. And uh, here is access to it. It's not a storage compartment. Storage in here. Okay. Right here you have a satellite hookup. If you go to a campground and you've got a satellite dish, portable dish, and uh, here is your uh, park cable. Here's your city water hookup. This is if you go to a campsite where they have direct hookups for water. Uh, you should use a non-toxic water hose and a water pressure regulator. Hook the regulator onto the tap on the campground. That way it not only keeps the pressure off of the unit, but keeps the pressure off of the hose as well. Right here, we have your sewer flush. Uh, 
if you are going to give your tank a good clean, you can hook a hose up to it. Don't use the same hose that you use for your city water. Use a separate hose. Uh, so hook a hose up to it. While you're doing this, always keep the black valve open. What could happen is if you closed that valve, the black tank could potentially fill up and you could end up flooding the unit. So again, always have your black valve open. Over here, you have your outside shower, hot and cold, nothing really to that. Storage compartment in the back. well as storage in the back compartment. You've also got your outside stove and sink. Pull that out, lift the top up. So you do have to hook up the water and the propane. So that's this line right here and it hooks up at the back and your propane line is here with a quick connect. And uh, that again just hooks up in the back. Of not going to show you because the camera is not going to really get in there very well. So, all right, I'm going to pushing it back in slowly, and then you do have to release the levers here. All right, just make sure it's locked in place. Automatic cooler temperature setting in the back. Okay, you have a 12 volt hookup here. You also have a USB connection as well. Here you have a 110 volt receptacle. So if you have the trailer plugged in, you'll be able to utilize the, the power hookups here if need be. This is where you fill up your freshwater tank. And then up in the front, we've got a, another battery compartment. Uh, in this case, it's empty, so you could add a second battery if you wanted to. You have a solar hookup if you wanted to hook up a portable Go Power kit. And then just a, another storage compartment. Sides. We're going to demo the awnings. So I'm going to close the door just until we get the main awning out. Uh, you have two uh, switches on here for awning control. Uh, this one is going to be for the main awning. This one is going to be for the rear awning. So we're going to hit the power button on the in command control center. And we've got our switches on here off, on, off, on. And on here, it says rear awning, and I'm gonna hit out on the keypad. Now, if there was an emergency and I needed to shut it off, I can shut it off from the awning control. All right, we'll flip over to the main awning now so uh, that is where it says uh, CS awning and I'm going to hit the out button on the control pad and as I'm doing so I am keeping the entry door closed back in it's just the opposite uh, make sure these power buttons are on and I'll just uh, hit in on the rear awning and I'm gonna hit in on the main awning And 
once they're in, I'm going to shut the power switches off. here. It's always a good idea to light one of the burners. Just let it run for a minute or two before you light your other appliances. Just helps to get the air out of the system and the propane flowing. So you have your turn on knobs here and you also have a striker right here. If the striker isn't working for whatever reason, you could use a barbecue lighter as well. The microwave up top. You do have to be plugged in for uh, that to operate. Um, over here we have your fridge. So you just turn the power button on. And then if it's set on A, it's automatic. It'll select electric first. If there's no electric, it'll switch over to propane. Uh, you can toggle between the different power sources. Uh, over on my right, there is a 12 volt uh, selection for the refrigerator, and then I can toggle over to a uh, battery. The, ba the 12 volt on a fridge is strictly for when you're driving. Uh, you'd, you'd never want to have it on battery um, unless you're actually just towing it down the road because it'll kill your battery very quickly. So I'll shut that 12 volt switch off. Normally, you can just leave the fridge on auto with the 12 volt off. And if you have 110 volt power, it'll take 110 volts. Uh, if there's no 110, it'll just run itself on propane. All right, temperature control here. And power off. Down here you have your power converter, and uh, what you have here is 110 volt breakers and 12 volt fuses along the side. So if you had a plug-in, for example, that wasn't working, you can check your breakers. If you had uh, something on the 12 volt side that wasn't working, you can check your fuses. Down here we have a propane detector. If it detects any leaks, it'll start beeping. Uh, the other thing that can cause them to chirp periodically is low voltage. If your batteries are low, you may hear it chirp. And what we have here is a 110 volt uh, outlet. Uh, it does have a GFI on it. And what that's for is to protect against moisture. Uh, if you have something plugged in here and it's not working, make sure you check the reset on it to make sure it hasn't tripped. Okay, back over to the command center, hit the power button, and uh, code one, two, three, four, and uh, if we hit the home, we want to run the air conditioner, we can hit the HVAC button, and then we can go over to uh, low fan or high fan, and warmer or cooler, and then Back to home again, uh, we've got our battery voltage showing at 13.1. Uh, we have our water pump here, where if you want to use water from the fresh water tank, you can select water pump. And um, yeah, just make sure you read the manual for this because it is quite involved. We have your Truma system here. So you've got a little dial knob. You can toggle back and forth if you want heat. Turn it there, hit the button, turn it on, and you can turn your temperature up. And you can see by the icon it is on propane. If I icon over to here, we can turn our hot water on. Over here. 
we can actually select between a mix of gas and electric or simply electric. And again, this is something I would read through the manual on.